Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. What are we gonna do today? I think it's odd job day. I've got a couple of things to finish up inside. I'll tell you a little bit of a story time about where I'm going with this and maybe spend a little bit of time thinking about what's gonna go on here. But first, if you're new here, this is our 2013 Mitsubishi Fuso FG and I'm turning it into an overland camper. Well, trying to. So let's get to it. The first thing I'm gonna do before I die twice of heat exhaustion is finish up something that's been bothering me on the electrical system. When I was putting together the main electrical distribution system, I ran out of these little boots that cover the positive terminals. So I'm missing one here, one here, and one there. Of course, if you're a regular viewer, you know my answer came from Amazon. If you're building something similar and you're looking for nice little silicone boots like this, I'll leave a link in the video description. After shutting the breakers off and trimming the boots to the right size, they're easy to slip into place. They only take a couple of seconds to install each, so it's a pretty quick job overall. It's a simple little thing to do, cleans it up and makes it safer. Just remember when you're done to go back and torque those nuts to the manufacturer's specs for the breakers. Now all we need to do is turn them back on and we have our voltage back. That's one more piece of this giant jigsaw puzzle that I can cross off the list. What next? If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I've been having problems getting the engine to start. Well, the other day, I went on a bit of an adventure. Let me paint a picture for you. Hey, that's my channel. Oh, right. Let me um, recreate a story for you using video and audio. In my search for some replacement parts, a friend of mine tipped me off to an engine for sale. Now, it was about a three and a half hour drive away, but for the price, it was probably worth going to pick up. So, after convincing my boss to let me leave work early, I hopped in my truck and headed to Montreal. However, while rolling through some slow-moving construction traffic, so using the only tool I had with me, I managed to pry the bearing cap off, pull the cotter pin out, tighten the nut a few turns, and continue on for about 500 feet. At this point, the logical thought was, even if I get where I'm going, I'm not putting an engine on this trailer and towing it home with a bad bearing. And luckily, using my phone and the Around Me app, I was able to locate a Canadian tire that was about eight kilometers away. Here, I proceeded to spend about $200 on tools, bearings, grease, but I was able to manage to get the old bearings removed and the new ones installed while only losing minimal blood. Five minutes later. It's 6.31 p.m. in Montreal. The first thing I did was remove the fuel pump solenoid from the perspective engine to ensure that the fuel pump was good, as this was the key to purchasing this engine. Looks good. Then, with help from the seller, we got the engine onto my trailer, cling wrapped, and strapped down. Several hours behind schedule, I made it home around midnight. It was quite a trip. But now that I have this engine here, there's something pretty easy that I'm going to try. One of the videos that I posted, someone made a comment to verify that this is actually operational because if this solenoid isn't opening, the fuel's not gonna go anywhere. And that's a pretty easy thing to check. First, I'm gonna check the resistance of the coil. If it's an open circuit, it's likely the problem. Looks like we have about three ohms. Let's compare that to the one on the parts engine. and it's three ohms as well. So the resistance on both of them matches, but there could be a mechanical issue inside. And since it's only two small screws to remove it, I might as well give it a shot. I'm not holding out high hopes for this, but it's so easy, it's worth a try. Ah! 
Take another one off the list. <laughs> to be clear, that's the list of stuff that didn't work, not the list of stuff that gets the truck finished. So let's talk about something maybe a little bit more interesting than a broken truck. What about this spot right here? I'm sure you've probably figured out that that is more than one step from the door to the floor. So most people are probably going to need a set of stairs or something to get in and out of here. But stairs alone are kind of boring. And I've had an idea since pretty much the beginning of this build and recently came across some surplus material that might just work perfectly. Yep, perfectly. Obviously, that is not a set of stairs, but before I can build stairs, I need to build the deck. Now, my idea for today is just playing around with the pieces that I have to see what size of deck I might be able to build. And obviously, we want it to come out as far as possible, but I also have a pretty big limitation. It doesn't really matter how I design this, a single layer deck sliding in is going to hit the frame. So that means for a slide out deck, I'm limited to about 26 inches of width, but I think that's pretty reasonable, especially when you take into consideration the length because we're planning on being about five feet long, considerably longer than the competition. I mean, other folks in the community, this isn't a competition. If it is, I've by far lost due to time. Let's face it, these are custom built trucks and everybody has a different reason for building them the way they do. For us, this is the right size deck. At least I hope it is. The reason for choosing a five foot length, it just perfectly lines up with the frames on the subframe, so why not? And for a little bit of scale, the truck box is about seven feet wide and that is about two feet wide, which puts us at about nine feet of width overall, which although not overly wide does mean I wouldn't legally be able to drive down the road with the deck fully extended. Don't think that'll be a problem. I haven't cut any of these pieces yet and I haven't purchased the slides for it to go in and out. So at this point, it's still just a concept. If you have any thoughts or ideas on it, throw them in the comments below. And that's as far as I'm getting on this slow build today. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.